Welcome everyone to Conversations in the Gallery. My name is George Ann Sisko, and I'm the Education Director at the Old State House Museum. And hi, I'm Amanda Callplacer, the Youth Education Coordinator here at the Old State House Museum. Today, we're standing in the central hallway on the first floor of the museum. And since we're about to commemorate the passage of the 19th Amendment into law, we thought it would be fun to talk about suffrage and the related artifacts from our collection that are actually on exhibit right now. Starting in the mid-19th century, women in the United States began forming women's suffrage organizations. Suffrage leaders held meetings, lectures, parades, and other events to campaign for women receiving the right to vote. In Arkansas, the suffrage movement really kicks off with Miles Ledford Langley Jr., an earnest and intelligent young man who attended the 1868 Constitutional Convention, which met in this building on the second floor. Miles very strongly believed in women's rights to vote, and he introduced a resolution at the convention. Of course, you can imagine what happened. The legislature thought he was nuts. They laughed at him, and the newspapers didn't treat him very kindly either, but he believed very strongly in this cause. And following the 1868 Constitutional Convention, he wrote a letter to Susan B. Anthony talking about his beliefs and how strongly he felt that women in Arkansas and the country should have the right to vote. But what Miles does is an important start. And you see women in Arkansas beginning to form groups, local suffrage groups, mm -hmm. and then also joining national suffrage groups as they start the movement in our state. Not only that, Arkansas suffragists also worked with other organizations like the Women's Christian Temperance Union to further their message and gain new members. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Frances Willard, who was the president of the Women's Christian Temperance Union, firmly believed that women who voted could help them achieve prohibition. Now, the liquor lobby hated this idea, and they did everything in their power to keep women <laughs> from getting the right to vote during this time period. And starting in the 1870s, you begin to see articles about women's suffrage in major Arkansas newspapers. Yes, you do. Weren't there several newspapers published in Little Rock in the late 1800s that focused on women's issues on the local, state, and national level? There were. There were two, actually, Amanda. Um, the first was the Arkansas Ladies' Journal. It was published and created by Mary Loughborough, and it ran from 1884 to 1888. The second was the Women's Chronicle, and it was published by the three ladies that you see in this photograph right here. And from left to right, they are Catherine Kate Campbell, Mary Burt Brooks, and Harriet Holt Cahoon. The very first issue of the Women's Chronicle was published on March 3rd, 1888. They were located right around the corner from the old state house at the corner of 2nd and Main Street, right in downtown Little Rock. They published articles that specifically addressed women's suffrage. And the publication of this journal ran until 1894. Mm -hmm. And I loved how the women delivered every week a copy of the Women's Chronicle uh, upstairs to the General Assembly so the legislators knew what the women's issues were. Very smart idea, those young ladies. <laughs> it was. And one of these ladies in the picture has a tie to Arkansas's governors. That's right. Mary Burt Brooks was the niece of Governor Joseph Brooks, who was one of the key players in the Brooks-Baxter War. There are so many buttons that were created during the American suffrage movement. And there are four in the exhibit case here that are always fun to talk about. The first um, is one of the button designs that actually matches the lettering on Amanda's shirt. That black on gold button was created by the National American Woman Suffrage Association in 1912. It's one of the most iconic American pinback button images in existence. They printed thousands of these and distributed them all over the country. And in fact, you still see this button more than any other to this day. Now the equal suffrage button with six stars, three above and three below the two words was issued by Ohio suffragists in 1911. And because Ohio wanted to become the sixth state allowing women the right to vote, unfortunately, Ohio doesn't make that happen for six more years, not until 1917. Now the button with the two women showing off their legs is poking fun at the idea of women's rights. This one is kind of interesting. It was an image created in 1912 by the American Tobacco Company 
And these buttons were distributed with the cigarettes in two different brands of cigarettes that they marketed. And the final button that you see in the case is the yellow one that says, Vote for Women's Suffrage, November 6th. And that button was created in 1917 and refers to the election held in New York on that day of that year when voters cast ballots for a referendum granting women the right to vote. And of course, the referendum did pass in New York that year. In addition to the posters, ribbons, buttons, and other memorabilia that was printed during this period, you see a lot of music that comes out about women's suffrage. It's both pro and con. And we are lucky enough to have one of those songs in the collection of the Old State House Museum. Yes, this song is titled, She's Good Enough to Be Your Baby's Mother and She's Good Enough to Vote With You, with music by Herman Paley and lyric by Alfred Bryan. This piece was published with two different covers in 1916 by Jerome H. Remick. Both covers portray a smiling young wife with either a small child or baby. And as you can see, we have a version with the baby. The ultimate purpose of this song appears to be for commercial use, but it does reinforce several arguments made by suffragists. Here is the chorus. state government during much of this time, the old state house was no stranger to suffrage events. Over the years, the building played host to political efforts, meetings, conventions, and rallies. The Arkansas Supreme Court, which met in this building, took a dim view of the liberation of women and emasculated the law in a number of late 19th century court decisions. But not all was bad, because in 1893, the Arkansas Women's Suffrage Association held their state convention in the large legislative chamber on the second floor of this building. Later on, there are several big rallies that take place out in front of the museum, including one in 1914 and again in 1916. Beginning in 1911, the Political Equality League began lobbying Arkansas state legislatures for a women's suffrage law. Yes, and the women continued to lobby each successive session of the state legislature in their efforts to pass a bill for women to get the right to vote. It's not until Charles Bruff becomes governor in 1917 that Arkansas suffragists actually have an ally in their efforts, finally. And both he and his wife, First Lady Ann Bruff, really supported women's suffrage. So Arkansas finally passes a law allowing women the right to vote in primaries in 1917. 40,000 women voted in that first primary in 1918. That's amazing. It must have been so exciting for them to be able to cast their vote for the very first time. Agreed. In June of 1919, Congress passed a women's suffrage amendment to the U.S. Constitution and submitted it to the states for the ratification. On July 28th of 1919, Governor Bruff called a special session of the Arkansas State Legislature for the purpose of ratifying the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The Arkansas Legislature vote passed 74 to 15, making Arkansas the 12th state to ratify the 19th Amendment. The 19th Amendment officially became law on August 26, 1920. And one of the reasons we say we commemorate the passage of this amendment instead of celebrating the anniversary is because not all women officially could vote in 1919. It actually takes decades before African American and Native American women can finally vote in the United States. To see more of the suffrage artifacts in our collection, please visit oldstatehouse.com. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed this conversation in the gallery.